We have just had a moment of very big excitement here in the Bell Forum in Solna outside Stockholm. The, this year's uh, prize in uh, physiology or medicine has just been announced and now there are two very happy guys uh, and a lot of disappointed researchers all over the world of course. And should we start, uh, Jolene Serrat, with, with uh, what have you uh, awarded this year? So this year we've awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine to John B. Gurdon and Shinya Yamamaka for the discovery that adult cells can become pluripotent. Yeah, and that, that is really a huge discovery. I mean, it's uh, scattered uh, a lot of the scientific world when you realize that the, that the skin cell, for example, could be turned back into a cell that could do almost anything. I mean, nobody would believe you if you said this like 50 years ago. That's right. Well, certainly that was, I imagine, surprising that the cell has the ability to back up yeah. from a mature state to an immature state. Yeah, because we've been used to seeing it, it's like a development in a river, it only runs one way or a, yeah, or a tree or whatever you tell it, and it can only go in one direction. And then, then th these two guys discovered that this is not true, which is often the case, of course, in science, that you discover that all uh, truths are not truth at all. Well, that's the beauty of silence. Yeah. yeah. But uh, tell me, um, first, if you take John Go B. Gordon, he's um, he done uh, research with a rather ugly frog, if I <laughs> should say so. It's a, a frog that lives in the water in Africa. What has he done with this frog? So what he did was he took the cell of a, a young frog, an immature cell, an yeah. embryo cell, uh -huh. and he took out the nucleus from that cell yeah. and he replaced that with the nucleus from a mature tadpole. Oh, I see. Yeah. And what he found was that manipulated cell could develop into a normal tadpole, a swimming tadpole. So the DNA retained all of the information to develop the cells of a tadpole. And this is many years ago, it's like uh, in the late 50s or even 60s when he done this. He, he must have been very sort of uh, almost uh, well brave and almost mad to do this kind of research. Certainly we could consider him a, pion a pioneer and that yeah. discovery was published in 1962, so yeah. it was 50 years ago. Okay, and then comes our other laureate who is uh, doing an even uh, more advanced thing. He takes a skin cell from a mouse and he treated it with some genes and he found out that it takes only like four genes to make this skin cell what we now call pluripotent, but it's, which really means that it can do a lot of different things. That's right, so he was really interested in genes that confer pluripotency in yeah. cells. And so you're correct, he identified four genes that he could put into these cells. And when he did that, the skin cell from a mouse became an immature cell. So it became pluripotent. Mm. Of course, this is not only for uh, to play around. This is uh, have, they have a, a, a lot of a serious. Uh, and, uh, they have a lot of serious um, goals with this. One of them is, of course, medical. If you can get cells like this, you could use them to treat a lot of big diseases, big and common diseases. Well, I think we could say that their discoveries really are basic science. Yeah. They haven't translated that to the clinic, but what we can see is that because of their work, we're at the forefront of examining these technologies for potential clinical application. Yeah. And so you're right that there is research into how one can utilize mm -hmm. these iPS cells, mm -hmm. these inducible pluripotent stem cells, yeah. to be able to reprogram into different cell types or new cell types that could be used to either study disease mechanisms. Mm -hmm. For example, neural cells are very difficult yeah. to get from patients. Yeah. With this technology, one can develop neural cells in a cultured dish yeah. and study them. Um, potentially down the line, way down the line, oh, yeah. this might be a clinical application. 
but at least today it's too early to say this discovery is used in the clinic at this day. Yeah, with one exception, and that is of course the use of uh, stem cells in blood that have been used for many years to treat uh, special uh, cancer diseases. Right, but yeah. that is not actually induced pluripotent no, stem cells. No, that's so that's kind of an stem. idea of how stem cell therapy can be yeah. used as regenerative medicine to help cure or treat disease. Yeah, let us linger a while on that uh, subject, how to use this cell, because it would of course solve a lot of immunological problems. You would not get a reaction from the patient if he got his own cell or her own cell. You could take a skin cell, for example, from me and treat my Parkinson or my uh, diabetes. diabetes or anything. And, and uh, how, how far away is this kind of a development, do you think? I think that there certainly are challenges ahead with this. Yeah. It's not at the point where next year we'll have a new therapy for this kind of treatment. Uh -huh. But the idea that one can utilize IPS technology or uh -huh. that we can understand that a cell, a mature cell, can back to mm. an immature yeah. state yeah. opens up a whole new frontier of research, yeah. which down the line may lead to new treatments for different diseases like Parkinson's or cardiovascular defects, mm -hmm. liver regeneration, yeah. insulin producing cells in diabetes, but today we're not at that stage. No. We're really here with a discovery that's a fundamental cell physiology. When they made this kind of discovery, did their colleagues believe them? I mean, when it comes to groundbreaking paradigm shifts, people are usually not believed in the first place. Did, did the, the scientific community believe them? Well, certainly the discovery by Gurdon was yeah. met with skepticism, uh -huh. but others repeated his work. And of course, as with all science, once many other groups start to find the same yeah. result, of course people feel confident that it's real. Mm. That's the real... No, a lot of this research is done, of course, uh, as always, uh, with mouse. But, uh, uh, what about human uh, skin cells? Could you turn them back? Like, he, 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 like uh, Yamanaka did? The idea, he used a mouse and yeah. he took skin cells from the mouse and he could introduce some genes into the mouse and he could make them uh, immature yeah, cells. Yeah. So, of course, one can use human cells has as it, well. Has it been done? Um, there are research efforts into that area as well. Okay. Of course, it also solves an ethical problem because when we talked about stem cells early days, it was only stem cells that you could uh, get from abortions. And now you could take a cell from, I guess, almost anyone and, and use them. You, you get away from all this ethical discussion about abortion. Well, theoretically, one can take cells from skin yeah. and actually, you know, do the same thing. Yeah. Um, you're bringing up an issue of the ethical debate, yeah. and I think the idea that one can use skin cells from an adult, either an animal or a human, mm -hmm. would would lessen the ethical concerns. But one can also imagine there may be ethical issues there as well. Yeah. So all scientists need to act responsible with their discoveries and application of work. Yeah. So finally, have you reached uh, this year's laureates and uh, they are happy, of course? Um, Euron Hansen has had a telephone conversation with both laureates. Uh -huh. And what he tells me is that uh, Yamamaka was home with uh -huh. his family. Uh -huh. And of course, he was very happy. Yeah. And John B. Gurdon was in the laboratory, <laughs> running, probably running some experiments. Uh -huh. And of course, he was delighted as well. Okay.